Over the next two videos, we're going to have a look at a couple of examples of differentiating an inverse function and finding a particular uh, gradient at a particular point. So, we're going to start off by sketching y is equal to x squared plus 1 and y is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Um, it's given that these are inverse functions of one another. So let's have a look at them. So y is equal to x squared plus 1 would look something like this. Okay, going through 1 on the y-axis. So that's your y is equal to x squared plus 1. And then y is equal to the square root of x minus 1 looks something like this. where that's 1 on the x-axis, and these, because they are inverse functions, are, there's this line of symmetry, they're symmetric in the line y is equal to x. So, if I'm asked to find the gradient of y is equal to the square root of x minus 1 at the point 5, 2, then this point would be over here somewhere. So, if I was to show this um, using the chain rule, which I can do, so y is equal to x minus 1 to the power of a half, and differentiate that, so dy by dx is 1 half x minus 1 to the power of minus a half, okay? And then if I'm going to substitute in the point 5, x is 5, so dy by dx, when x is 5, is equal to 1 half, times 5 minus 1 to the power of minus a half. Now 5 minus 1 to the power of minus a half is 4 to the power of minus a half, which is 1 quarter to the power of a half, which is 1 half. So we have 1 half times 1 half, so 1 quarter. Okay? So the gradient at this point is 1 quarter. Now, if I looked at y is equal to x squared plus 1, and then found the gradient of the similar point that's over here, reflected in the line y is equal to x, so that has the coordinates 2, 5, then y is equal to x squared plus 1, dy by dx is 2x, and if I evaluate that when x is 2, I get 2 lots of 2, so 4. So in actual fact, what I found is the gradient at that point is 4. The gradient at that point is 1 quarter. Okay? So in actual fact, they are reciprocals of one another. And this leads to a useful result. The gradient of f of x at the coordinates a, b is equal to 1 over the gradient of the inverse function of x at b, a. And this is a very useful thing to know because it will enable us to find the gradient at particular points on the inverse function where in some cases I may not be able to differentiate that inverse function. Okay? So, or I may not be able to find the inverse function and then differentiate it. So it will enable us to do something that is quite powerful and we're going to look at that in the next video as another example. This doesn't come up a great deal but it is really useful to know.